But it makes sense. Um, so, show of hands, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as abstract as it gets. <laughs> so, who writes code? Yeah. Who works in a language that encourages abstractions? It's always in language. Uh, who doesn't write code, but occasionally thinks, yeah, that's, that's a good start, okay, who doesn't write code on a regular basis? Okay, so not it's a bit technical, so that's fine. But there are abstractions, I think, that um, aren't always apparent exactly what they are, and um, is that me? <laughs> that's abstract enough. So, There are abstractions that um, I think some of them we're very familiar with, and some we're not so familiar with. So if I were to say shape, triangle, square, circle, animal, dog, yeah, all the typical very early stuff you might do in uh, your uh, object-oriented experiments very early on in your career, probably. Uh, we're going to talk about abstractions that aren't typically technical. But when you're faced with a technical choice, they can become quite contentious. And there's quite a lot of debate around what the abstraction is. So, if you're writing code, you're delivering products, you're most likely dealing with this as an abstraction, a customer. So, what I'm going to talk about is a scenario that happened to us in a recent product development uh, sprint. And it's just interesting because we didn't expect the abstraction to cause so much um, debate. So we're working with a customer. We want to introduce them to our product. We're not going to make any um, revenue, let's face it, if we're not introducing our customers to our product. So in this case, Let's call that product a policy, an insurance policy. So, first question is, how do we go about introducing our customers to these products? In our case, it's very simple. We've got a digital journey down here, which consists of an application that can run on browsers and handsets. And as soon as you start to introduce the idea of a digital journey, introducing your customers to policies, then you start to think about other things. So when is the customer a visitor to your digital journey? When do they progress or promote to being an applicant? Then it's the point where they might want to actually apply for a policy. Then it gets a little bit more complicated because in our implementation, which at the moment seems pretty simple because we've got a nicely um, constructed domain, if you like. Digital journey down here. Problem here is that um, we've got a third party that we have to integrate with for various reasons. That third party is giving us the ability to identify our visitors, our applicants, our customers, so that we can, through regulatory um, guidance and regulatory uh, due diligence and all the rest of it, actually allow this person who's visiting and who's applying to hold the policy. The complication for us, of course, is that that third party has a very specific idea, a very specific abstraction that they want us to know about and to use if they <coughs> provide that service to us. So they've got an idea of a session. So if you can imagine that session, you make a pull out to, has an authentication token. So it starts to become a technical value context. Something is starting to make us think very heavily about what these sessions mean. Okay? So that's on the one side. Remember, remember, it's a third party, completely external 
system. And there's no way we can get away from using the message. And you have to have an authentication token if we're going to have any interaction with that third party. Forget the domain for a second. We're all the way back to what we're actually meant to be doing, which is delivering a digital journey, compelling website, nice journey, good UX, good UI, everything that we want. Um, and on the other side of the uh, landscape, we also have a session. This family concept is all about HTTP. And there's a controller in there. In our case, it's um, don't do all this. In our case, it's a spring control. Yes. <laughs> so whether we like it or not, if we want to deliver a digital zeroing that introduces customers to policies and be compliant with regulations, we have to use this third party. We've got a session over here with authentication tokens and all the rest of it. And a session over here which has you know, the web server lifecycle, the idea of uh, the identity of the visitor, the requests and responses and stuff like that. But really, we're quite happy and comfortable with the fact that we've got a domain that's quite expressive. We don't want to lose that abstraction. <coughs> the abstraction's in here, it's a neutral boundary context. It's clean, it works, it's, it's been fully tested, all the rest of it. But we somehow have to resolve the information in a session from a third party with the information in a session on control. If we're going to allow that person to visit and successfully pull the party. So the problem we have is that we really didn't want to introduce the word session into our domain. Because customers, policies, visitors, applicants, products, things like that. It just didn't seem the right place for it to go. So the temptation, of course, was to skip around here, yeah, and start to share that information and completely avoid all of the value that that, that neutral domain boundary context was giving us. Which is obviously not. That's not what it was. So somewhere there was an abstraction to the session. HTTP session, some obscure third party session. How are they ever going to meet it? That's something interesting happens when we start to talk to SMEs a bit more, QAs and BAs. And we try to raise the level of abstraction a bit. Because there had to be a way for the sessions to be. It just had to be. And it's quite a surprising thing that happened. We forgot about all our technical bound contacts, HTTP, REST, or whatever's over here. I think it's so actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you can see. Yeah. Um, right. So um, we did it. I don't know if this is triangulation, but something happened that broke that deadlock. Some kind of triangulation happened where we were too embedded, you know, we need to solve this technical problem. How the hell did we get a session? And we just thought about well, the high street. So this um, this vendor, this provider of policies, has a high street outlet. And if you're a customer who's visiting a high street outlet and you happen to talk to an advisor there, the likelihood is that you're going to start a session with that advisor to talk about the plan for a policy. And that advisor is going to take you on a journey in a session, a one to one session, and ultimately you're going to end up with a policy and walk out your hand. Uh, so, this is when we start to think, well, the session seems to be, it does belong It does belong Why should we have to make sure that we're going to have like a domain? Should have a session there. So, it's pretty much what we did. Let's put the session in there. So, to technicalize, it looks like it is wrong. But now, the QA, BA, the SMEs in the business are perfectly happy that we've modeled the session that was neither bound to technical constraints. 
absolute model on what actually happens out in that high street. <coughs> so it gets interesting then. Scenarios that fall out of that uh, abstraction are things like abandon. So when uh, the visitor to the website abandons that session, closes the browser, or decides that we're interested in the policy, we want to instrument that and capture it, and maybe send them an email to say, look, we noticed you dropped out of this from Julie. Is there anything we're doing wrong? Would you like to come back and restart the application or continue continue the application? We've modeled it, we can call it session abandon, job done. Um, session abandon here, of course, would invalidate this session, invalidate that session, and in another boundary context down here, send out an email. What's surprising about that is that when we put another context in, which we haven't really thought about at the time, which is support context, and um, started to think about who we could talk to about that. We saw that this is possible, that is, you know, surprise, surprise. Um, but in support context, if we had a, another web app here, it was wholly owned by the business, but we're still concerned about what sort of journey is going on over here. The support context um, brought quite happily abandoned that session if it was suspicious activity. So that's about it. Um, it was an interesting one for us because we saw that the two technical constraints were uh, needed to be resolved. And being developers who like to discover things on whiteboards, we really found ourselves a little bit narrow in our view of what our session was. When we opened it up, we raised that level of abstraction up a bit, we found that we could put it in there, and it opened up all sorts of other discussions with other areas of the business. Other contexts, um, most uh, interesting of all is high street context and support context. That's it. That's what happened. <laughs> Any questions on my drawing skills? Or <laughs> So you all got it, mate. <laughs> 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 okay. So anything that's clear, or yeah. Yeah. Well, bounded concepts are do can express the same thing. And that's where context maps come in. Yeah. So a session down here might have um, something to do with the uh, spring uh, life cycle model or something like that. And the session up here was primarily concerned with uh, their authorization token. So completely different shapes to these things. But um, yeah, some common ground here, you know, in terms of methods, in terms of actual behavior. But um, Session, session, session is perfectly fine in the event driven design sort of way because the abandoned contexts are intended to be mapped using context maps. So, anti corruption layers, what we've got here is an anti corruption layer that says, okay, you, we understand we have to deal with authorization tokens. We get that you've got a session and we have to use it. But we're not necessarily going to use it the way that, you know, literally, we're going to map it to what a session means to us. Likewise, here. <coughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.